What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to better understand spinal cord injuries at T6 or below so that you can determine your patient's level of function and how to best help them, and also pass the NPTE. Remember that every patient with a spinal cord injury is going to present a little bit differently, but this should give you a general guideline. A patient with a T6 through T12 spinal cord injury will be pretty independent with assistive devices. Some ambulation may be possible with a lot of effort and extensive bracing, so they'll mostly use a manual wheelchair for mobility. For transfers, these patients will utilize the head-hips relationship to their advantage. That means they use their arms as a fulcrum and they move their head the opposite direction that they want their hips to go to be able to better move. The intercostals and abs will be at least partially innervated, so they'll have a strong functional cough and they should have normal speech volume and duration. At this point, there is sympathetic nervous system innervation to the upper extremities, gut, and trunk. And so they'll have some level of thermoregulation to these areas and a normal heart rate. These patients will usually have hypertension. Any patient with a spinal cord injury above T12 will have bladder dysfunction with little to no storage ability and reflexive emptying when there's a little bit of urine in the bladder. This can cause dyssynergia, frequent UTIs, overactive bladder, and high residual volume. Taking scheduled bathroom breaks can help the patient maintain some level of independence with emptying. Sexual dysfunction is likely with reflexive arousal, but lack of emission due to the lack of cortical input to the genitals. Fertility may be possible with help. Patients with spinal cord injuries below T12 will likely affect the cauda equina more than they will the spinal cord. And because of that, all spinal cord reflexes are lost meaning that the bladder is now going to be areflexic, which means that there will be no emptying of the bladder. These patients will need a catheter and may be at risk for, again, UTIs, distension, leakage, incontinence, and bowel impaction. These patients are at a much higher risk for infertility because of the lack of reflexive arousal. However, these patients will be much more likely to have SNS and thermoregulation to their lower extremities, as well as normal vital signs. Gait may also be possible depending on the level and the severity of the nerves affected. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. The abs innervated at T1 through T6 help the most with producing a functional cough to clear sputum. The intercostals and other accessory muscles can produce a weak cough. Hopefully that covers all of the bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can drop me a comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.